सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मेदिषा वह ओ शाशाशाते गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम yesterday we had seen the example of the chariot and somebody who knows how to ride that chariot well what are the benefits somebody who does not have a proper ability to drive that kind of chariot what are the repercussions of it after having understood that example where do we start our sadhana from <clears throat> see because this message was being given in way back in satya yuga so much of effort was put in trying to tell this is where you can pick and choose where you have to start if it were in this yuga you would have to start from the first step so much of our discussions would have ended there we we'll start with that then we will can think about the rest of it but even in this yuga we would require the steps to know as to how we can progress from one step to the other very beautifully well thought well laid out process so it is the 10th mantra please it is the 10th mantra Please repeat after me. <clears throat> Indriye bhyapara yartha. Page one forty-seven. Arthe bhyascha param mana. Param mana. Mana sastu para buddhi. बुद्धेरात्मा महान बुद्धेरात्मा महान परहा वी सो इंद्रिय पराह्यर्था सटलर देन दी इंद्रियस दी ऑर्गन्स ऑफ परसेप्शन आर दी सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स बिकॉज विदाउट द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स द सेंस ऑर्गन्स देयर प्रेजेंस और एब्सेंस वुड नॉट मेक एनी सेंस the presence of eyes or ears is appreciated only when we hear different sounds or the absence of those sounds but without the sound at all would we really know if we had an ear without sounds at all then it would have been looking like an vedantic class If nothing goes inside, <laughs> but the world is not like that. The world is appreciated only when the different sense objects mean something to the sense perceptions. Arthe bhyascha param mana ha. Subtler than the sense objects is the mind, and the mind is something. amazing that has been given unto us <clears throat> in patanjali's yoga sutras he says yogah chitta vritti nirodah 
what does yoga mean according to him he says chitta vritti nirodaha ability to remove all thoughts from the mind clean up so essentially what it means is annihilation of the mind now when we say annihilation of the mind nirodaha annihilation so there will be mindless people walking around after a yoga class so the explanation given is amazing he says there that there are two aspects of manaha or chitta one aspect of it is an amazing clockwork that has been installed by the lord and thank goodness it cannot be messed with by us human beings thank goodness <clears throat> see bhagwan knows what are the things that we he has to keep involuntary in a human system and what has to be the voluntary process which can depend on the choice of the individual thinking voluntary you can think and choose when to think when not to think to think at all or never to think at all it's a choice breathing bhagwan has not put that in that category he has put it in involuntary category whether we remember to breathe or not breathing keeps happening good right <laughs> or else what would have happened population control <laughs> only those who have amazing sharp memory will survive those who have a very lenient memory will not be present <laughs> similar similar to breathing is the processing one aspect of the mind which is involuntary inaccessible to us and that is the aspect of the mind which is amazing when we look at it in order to understand that let me ask a question you know nowadays in this newer homes they are having this media room i have been going to many new houses and these new houses they have the media room so they keep explaining that you know there is this 72 inch screen 5.1 theater system and they go on blu ray and uh, all these you know so i asked someone what does this 5.1 theater system mean what does that 5.1 mean so i i don't know. all that i know is by installing that we have better voice better sound system see when they say theater system is 5.1 it means in a very layman's terms it means that there are five speakers and one base or subwoofer you know there is a center one left then there is right you know when you see left and right my left my right i'm talking so there is left then there is right then there is the rare ones which are left and right so there are five total what it actually means then i went into internet researched on to it what does it actually mean 5.1 whenever there is a sound recorded <clears throat> most of us know about the mono and the stereo the moment you talk about 5.1 or 7.2 they are little sophisticated have you been to an imax theater 
before they start they show you the speakers as to how many speakers are there and everything it's a very <coughs> interesting arrangement that they have their system is much more sophisticated than this 5.1 so what do they do when they record this sound track is they provide five different channels within the same track there are five segments so the main voice is given in the central channel so when that is given in the central channel in all channels you can hear that voice I mean front three speakers and the back speakers you can hear the voice then there are the uh, percussions then there is the string instruments and then there are other side instruments mixers so they are given each one a channel and that's why sometimes when you observe in your own car that you know sometimes the music seems to travel from one end of the door to the other and back have you observed and when you play those cds it usually that sound keeps traveling seems like is because it is moving through these different speakers the channels have you I, I, do you all watch Indian movies, right? Yes, okay. And most of it are, as they call it, bootlegged, <laughs> right? Sometimes these bootlegged ones, <coughs> they have an amazing quality. What is the amazing quality? the video goes it at its own pace and the audio goes at its own pace there is no proper synchronization so the um, action is showing something else the dialogue is something else how how long can we watch such movie we'll get irritated in 5 minutes we'll turn it off now imagine up here in the mind what does the mind do it is a collecting agent i'll explain what collecting agent means through the eyes through the ears through the nose through the tongue and through the skin we receive various packets of information every single moment as the smallest moment that you can break it up into that much of information is being received every single moment what does this mind have to do through these five channels when the when the, you know, the data is being received through the eyes we are getting the forms through the ears we are getting the sounds through the nose we are getting the smell through the tongue we are getting the taste and through the skin we are getting the sparsha the sense of touch so yesterday when we sat it was warm cozy as it proceeded it started getting colder and when it starts getting cold you can see people go introvert <laughs> one by one layers after layers are put and then introvert and when it gets too stuffy and there is no air circulation they will with your hand nothing possible can be achieved a sense of gratification at because the most of the sensors are here and these sensors if they are relieved the rest of the body might feel little relief hence therefore with the hand you do this there is a sense of touch so every single moment there is huge amounts of data being received lots of information is being received like you are watching me i am watching all of you so you are watching my hands move my uh, you know the words that are coming
and I have to be careful as to the words that I am making, the impact can be good only if my hands and my ex entire expression is in sync with the uh, bhava that I want to express. If I say, it was a tall building, it does not make sense. It was a tall building, huh? you will also, okay, must have been really tall. So, you are also trying to observe, gather all the information because the way I depict it is what you would imagine it. And I am also trying to observe how many of you are grasping it, how many of you are not grasping it, how many of your eyes have that spark of understanding, how many are, huh? Huh? say that again, what? Without saying a word, it can all be seen in that few muscles shift. <coughs> so, the mind is receiving all this various information and what is it doing? To make a very beautiful cognition of the entire experience, to make sense of the experience, it bundles every single moment by packaging all the information received through the five different channels. Whatever is received through these five sense perceptions, it is bundled as an experience. The moment we wake up till the moment we sleep, the mind is one, one aspect of mind is constantly working <coughs> in arranging this experience bundling this experience like the bootlegged video. Imagine if there was a discrepancy between each one of these channels of what we see, what we hear, what we sense, what we taste, what we smell and what we touch. If there was a millisecond discrepancy, if the mind felt a little lethargic, first let me just and it, it, there was a staggering uh, information of sound and it was packaged later as an experience separately. See with everything going normal, we have miscommunication, misunderstanding, wrong understanding, no understanding and we mess with our lives quite efficiently. <coughs> Imagine if there was a discrepancy between each channel that the mind receives the information, thank goodness that the mind does a absolute perfect job, a thankless job rather. We only keep complaining, oh, my mind is like my mind, my mind. do you even know what the other aspect of mind that it does? It consolidates experiences. And while hearing it, it might not appear very, uh, you know, palpable. Say for example, what is it that I am holding in my hand? Dhakkan, a, a lid, a multi-purpose, a plate, a little plate, a dhakkan, and various other aspects of benefits of it. <coughs> How much time did it take for you to understand what it was? Like that. You heard my sound, you saw the vastu in my hand, the mind consolidated the question and the object shown into one package of experience as a question that was extended <coughs> to our vast memory. Some said it was a plate, some said it was a lid, some said it was a duckan. When you recognized it, as per your earlier experience, you immediately understood. After the understanding is made, the information was passed on to the mind that this is a plate which is being now used as a lid. 
and the mind had to choose the proper communication which is through the voice and then out comes through the voice as various answers that we have given. All this processing that I am trying to you know go step by step happened in few milliseconds. The moment the question was asked it was processed and then the information came out and with your mouth you answered. And who is doing the seamless job of information transfer that is being done by the mind. Mind has another beautiful aspect that is why the mind is called the flow of thoughts and thoughts in Sanskrit are called vritti. In many of our native languages, vritta means a sphere or a circle, vrittakar, a sphere or a circle. A thought is called a vritti. Why is it called a vritti? Because of its cyclic nature. It goes from here, from the mind through the organs of perception goes out into the world, perceives the world, touches all the almost like it smears through the world, understands what it is, comes back with the information. There is that movement of it coming starting from here, going out and then coming back. So, that entire cyclic motion is called vritti. <coughs> that is why the behavior which is the expression of the thought, what is it called in Sanskrit? Pravritti, prakatita expressed thoughts, vrittayaha. So, vritti it is like a continuous flow of thoughts and these vrittis, these thoughts can cognize a form given a name can cognize the name given a form. Now, here we saw the example of you recognizing the lid or the plate. Say for example, orange what, what comes into your mind? Fruit. For some it is the flavor, for some it is the smell, for some it is the shape, for some it is the color. Not long ago I understood I have stayed overstayed in US, you know why? These kids ask these silly questions and sometimes they catch us. So, one kid suddenly stopped me and said, orange what comes into your mind? said county. No smell, no taste, no flavor, no shape, no size, no color. County of all the things that is what I, comes into my mind. <coughs> I was in that county at that moment, so it just popped out of my head. So, you tell the name and the shape is cognized. You would give the shape, the name Nama Rupa is cognized by the mind. Meaning, the known parameters is deciphered by the mind. So, the entire world of sense objects as the mind keeps experiencing various sense objects, various sizes, various shapes, various kinds that we experience, the mind categorizes each one of them, tags them. <coughs> For example, you may have used a pen, a pen is something that you used to write, a simple definition, but how many kinds of them have you used? Millions, 
how many kinds have you seen another few millions so when i say kinds of various things that you have interacted it is not just one kind within that one kind there are various and the memory that the mind is constantly filling in with the information with the newer aspects of the same kind so if there is a pen so there are millions of tags to it what kind of pen that is why when we say flower something which you like might come into your mind but what flower is this of those million variables <coughs> you will identify first color what is the color a white flower what is this white flower called can you see it ha carnations good a variation he thought is it a rose he is not very sure because he he scanned through sitting from where you are he scanned through the entire thing could it be a rose shape looks like it you know the bud roses that come maybe it is a rose but white hmm so the question was is it a rose no and what is it carnation so of the various uh, you know po possible different permutations white a flower and what could it be in this shape and size and the mind immediately identifies it mind works in the realm of known it's a flow of thoughts flow of content in that thoughts and it works in the name in in the field of name and forms these name and forms which it has had an earlier experience of so mind works in the realm of known <coughs> <coughs> have you ever tasted everybody here has lived in us for more than 5 uh, years anybody less than 5 years nobody okay so you must have tasted this have you ever tasted dama daka duchi never so what are the train of thoughts that are running in your mind what is it is it a trick question first if it is not a trick question what is it you said it have you ever tasted so is it something to eat something to drink something to uh, what what kind of you know give us some parameters maybe we have tasted it but you have named it differently hence therefore maybe it was different in how what is it known in different languages what language is it first of all so this particular faculty of the thought texture so far it was working in the realm of known but the moment a realm of unknown was introduced the texture of mind becomes very inquisitive interrogative it wants to identify through various processes various logics as to what it is that texture of thought which works in the realm of unknown is called intellect and that is the subtlety of the mind and intellect the difference the mind works in the realm of known intellect works in the realm of unknown for those of you who are still hanging on with damada kaduchi you cannot have tasted it because i just created it okay moving forward what are the other differences between this mind and intellect which makes the intellect subtler than the mind so the first concept to understand 
that both mind and intellect are nothing but uh, by content by its texture is nothing but uh, thought. The nature of it is nothing but thought. When the thought is of an indecisive nature, a wobbly nature, then it is called mind. But when it is of a decisive nature, then it is called intellect, first difference. That which works in the realm of known is mind. That which works in the realm of unknown is the intellect. The mind we have already seen gathers information from the world, packs the information from the world as an experience. Who is it that analyzes that experience? The process of analysis, uh, analyzing all this information is done by the intellect. Mind is not analytical, it is the intellect that is analytical. Mind just receives information and dispatches information. but it is the intellect which analyzes and it has got some precise analysis. So, in one class I asked, if I throw something at you, what will you do? So, there were different kinds of answers. Some said we will duck, some said we will catch, some said we will catch it and throw it back at you. <clears throat> there was one kid who gave me the spectacular answer, there is always that one kid in the classroom. He said, it depends on what you throw. <coughs> I may catch, I may duck, I may catch and throw it back, I may catch and keep it. It depends on what you are throwing. whatever it is, if there is a particle being thrown at you by surprise, before that surprise becomes a shock. You know, when does the surprise become a shock? You cognize that there is something being hurled at you, but you are not able to identify what it is and take the proper action when it comes and hits you, then it becomes a shock. Until then, it is a surprise. So, something is flying towards you and what is our instant reaction to that flying particle? UFO. <laughs> Until we catch and uh, analyze it, we do not know what it is. So, something is being hurled at us and we are uh, trying to find. And if we are not able to find whatever it was, it is coming at a, div uh, at a very uh, fast speed we immediately put our hands and then duck, cover ourselves and duck. <coughs> See whether our response were to catch it or to duck or whatever it was, imagine the amazing process of analysis that is happening. The information that your eyes, ears, nose and the other sense perceptions have gathered that this particle is coming towards you. That piece of information as an experience has gone to the intellect. What does the intellect do? It is doing a, a scientific calculation. It is only when you go through the uh, different aspects of physics that you end up understanding that the mind is already calculating, sorry the intellect is already calculating all this stuff. what is the speed with which the particle is moving towards you, what is the size of the thing that is coming towards you, <coughs> what could be the probable weight, the weight and the speed, the angle with which it is coming, what could be the impact, 
all this is being analyzed by the intellect not just that it analyzes it after having made a quick analysis looking at the size and the shape and the speed and the the tangential or the uh, the parabolic uh, movement of that particular particle coming towards you it gives the information as a decision whether you have to catch it leave it duck or protect then you finally understand that which is coming towards you is just a ball <coughs> and if you are with gurudev you know after his pada puja was done his you know at least to our yuva kendra members when we were in yuva kendra the distribution of prasad was fun because he would sit where he is and because there was a huge gathering he would start throwing these apples mangoes and bananas at people you catch <coughs> knowing that usual habit of gurudevs there were three or four of us we would stand in a strategic position and because we were the tallest and uh, anywhere that, that was a strategic position because anywhere that our hands could reach we could always grab six seven prasads <laughs> and gurudev could immediately guess uh, and look at us and say, okay he would take that as a challenge and then put it through in such a way that it goes through us but not hurt the other person so it's a, a apple that is coming towards you so what do you do the intellect has given the mind precise codes pick your hands cup them in such an angle let that thing that is floating towards you be caught in this angle in this direction and after having received it to reduce the impact move it all this instruction is given so it does a very beautiful precise analysis so the mind gathers the information and the intellect processes that information and when does it do this is being done as a process by the mind and intellect the moment we wake up to the moment we sleep amazingly it synchronizes all these different movements constantly it is being done so because of these various reasons it is said here indriye bhyah para hyarthah arthe bhyasya param manah manasastu para buddhih subtler than the mind is the intellect we just saw the reason buddhe ratma mahan parah subtler than the buddhi is the totality of the mind who is the president of this country not a trick question baba obama right when is the next election next year okay so this year is the fourth year coming to a term next year is the fourth year okay four year term three and a half years ago what was obama he was a citizen like you and me a part of this country was the citizen of this nation but the totality of all minds put together when they came together majority of them gathered and gave the power of that totality to one person by electing that one person so who what is he now 
though the technical word is president what does that presidentship show a representative of the entire totality as much as the totality gets influenced by the individuality the individuality also gets influenced by the totality <coughs> So, including our thought processes happen not independent, but they are also dependable variables on this totality. When suddenly the totality thinks, I mean it might have been sparked by one incident. But that one incident, where did it happen? Tunisia, almost an year ago, there was one particular farmer who self immolated himself. And because of that one triggering factor, the entire Tunisian totality reacted after many years to the rule of that particular nation. So, one act of one individual impacted the entire totality and that totality was so thoroughly impacted that that totality moved one individual who was trying to grab the hold on the entire nation. So, the whole example chain shows that one individual mind, if it is strong, can impact the entire totality and the totality in turn has the impact on the individuality. Like for example, Today you had a very busy day and you came home say around 7, 10, 7, 15 but the lecture was starting at 7, 30. So, you, you thought ok, today we will have dinner later. This is my imagination. Okay. <clears throat> we will have dinner later and you came here. After the entire lecture was done, you reach home and by the time you reach home, you are so famished that you end up telling your husband, you know, I am really tired. Instead of going home, can we just stop by and eat in our restaurant, which is a common thing that keeps happening. Could our ancestors our grandfathers or somebody in our family, two, three generations down the lane, could they have the thought of a restaurant 60, 70 years ago? Even if they were tired, they would have ended up making something, eat and then sleep. But today's world, the totality has a concept and the, uh, the vision of having a restaurant and it has been impacting the individual as much as the individual's need has impacted the totality. So, that totality mind, samashti 
as it is called wherein all desires aspects and different kind different dimensions of it gather together to make that totality this totality is also known as hiranya garbha hiranya garbha it's been conceived just before delivering garbha is the womb it is almost about to appear but it is the potentiality of the totality put together so that totality put together is called here as mahan paraha why is it subtler than the intellect because the intellects individual intellects get influenced by the totality constantly what is subtler than this totality aspect of the intellect that is said in the 11th mantra repeat after me mahatah param avyaktam avyaktat purushah parah purushanna param kinchit साकाष्ठा सा परागति महत सटलर दैन द महत द टोटैलिटी एस्पेक्ट इज कॉल्ड परम अव्यक्त अव्यक्त दी अनमैनिफेस्ट See, the concept of unmanifest is very beautiful <coughs> right in front of the lord there is a candle burning can you see it okay <coughs> and because of the kind of conditions that we live in these houses can be called as the i call them personally as the lakshagraha why are these called lakshagraha do you remember where that word comes lakshagraha ha <coughs> in mahabharata the pandavas were tricked to live in a wax house they were so vulnerable to fire which finally got burned down these houses are also like that only right <laughs> made of wood if beyond a certain what 5000 square feet or yeah beyond 5000 square feet you have to have sprinklers so right above you see a metallic fixture what is that metallic fixture if in case there is fire it will start sprinkling water so that the damage is controlled that is the purpose so because of living in such conditions the habit is that as a hindu we light the lamp and we allow it to uh, you know go into the avyakta by itself but then in this country what do we do promptly we light the lamp and after the purpose is served please don't blow it off or you know take a flower and then use it in this country you have got gadgets for that also there is a little dome shaped thing with a little rod because most of these candles are in a glass encasement and you cannot reach down there so therefore you drop this down and you cover that flame 
and the carbon dioxide self extinguishes. So, when the fire is extinguished, what does it mean? Does it mean to say that the candle can never ever burn again? No, it will burn provided we give uh, the proper environment around it for it to light flame again. But until then what happens to that flame? That flame is in the unmanifest state. Unmanifest till what time and what condition? Until the conditioning required for it to come out as flame. <clears throat> See, you know, peanuts or various seeds that we get. You soak them in water and then cover them tightly with a cloth. After a day or two, what do we see? Little, 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 little sprout. And there are people who just say, not allowing it to sprout. Or they roast it once. Once you roast it and then soak and then tightly wrap it, do you think that that little sprout will come out? What happened to that sprouting capacity? It is done with, right. So, an unroasted seed is soaked in water. in that seed. For example, have you ever seen a banyan tree? Have you ever been to Adiyar in Tamil Nadu, in Chennai? It is a huge establishment of banyan tree, establishment because you cannot identify where exactly the main trunk of it is because it has dropped its roots in so many places and expanded over acres. Have you ever seen a banyan seed? It is really small, one tenth of a mustard seed, one tenth or even smaller than, very, 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 very tiny. Now, if somebody shows you that seed, if you can see it <laughs> and says, in this seed is the unmanifest form of that huge banyan tree. Hey, come on, are you kidding? Such huge tree in this small seed, how is it possible? But do not we see it as a possibility that the entire seed, however small it is, it has the unmanifest form of the tree to be. <coughs> Similarly, from the intellect, the subtler than the intellect is the totality. Subtler than the totality is avyakta, avyakta the unmanifest form of the Lord. That is what comes in Purusha Suktam, wherein it is said that the entire creation is just one quarter. I mean, if you take the entire, you know, Paramatma and divide into four equal parts, this entire cosmos is one quarter only. 
त्रिपाद ऊर्ध्व उदय स्थित थ्री क्वार्टर्स इज इन स्टिल अनमेनिफेस्ट फिगरेटिवली स्पीकिंग नॉट दैट यू कैन रियली क्वांटिफाई परमात्मा बट इफ यू कुड क्वांटिफाई मे बी वन क्वार्टर ऑफ इट इज इन द क्रिएशन द अदर थ्री क्वार्टर्स इज इन अव्यक्त I still don't see the spark of understanding of avyakta in the eyes. Okay, let me tell you. You are in a party, and somebody in that party is speaking on your native language. my language is telugu so somebody is speaking there all these telugu speaking people you know and they picked on the telugu speaking people and the moment i heard somebody picking on telugu speaking people i turned around with all enthusiasm and i turned around to see that it was my boss who is just said given me the good information that i am due for a promotion <laughs> all that which you would have blurted out where is it <laughs> ah that is called unmanifest understood now that is at vst this is beyond samashti beyond the totality the entire creative surge in its nascent form unmanifest form is called avyaktah vyakta manifest अव्यक्त अनमेनिफेस्ट बिटवीन द मैनिफेस्ट एंड द अनमेनिफेस्ट इज द हिरण्य गर्भ द टोटैलिटी अव्यक्ता सटलर दैन दिस अव्यक्त अनमेनिफेस्ट इज द पुरुष पर here adi shankara acharya ji defines purushaha in a very beautiful manner <coughs> he gives two definitions he says puri shayanat purushaha puri shayanat what does a pura mean in sanskrit or even in various other languages pura means a village <coughs> or a a city or a town wherein different components have been brought together for the benefit of all those who live in there similarly you know the head the hands the torso the legs the inner equipments the outer equipments all of them have been bundled together assembled together and this assembly has been enlivened puri shayanat that enlivening principle is called purushah puri shayanat purushah and there is a second definition the second definition is purnatvat va purushah or it can also be called as purusha because purnatvat this is the only aspect of the entire existence that is complete unto itself and that which is complete unto itself is called purushah this purushah is subtler than the avyakta 
this avyakta is otherwise known as maya prakriti avyakriti these are all various names of the same avyakta the prakriti and purusha the the relationship is very unique purusha is independent of prakriti i'll make two three sentences statements and then try to give the explanation because these are subtle aspects purusha is independent of prakriti prakriti is dependent variable on purusha purusha do can exist without prakriti cannot express without prakriti i'll repeat the second sentence purusha do can exist independent of prakriti cannot express without prakriti now the interpretation of prakriti can be given as you know at individual level at at vst as individual talents i have a talent to speak some have the talent to sing though i would like to consider that i also have the talent to sing <coughs> that in many gatherings i tell them if you don't keep quiet i'll start singing and the entire congregation comes to quietitude immediately now if i can bring 3 400 people to their quiet format effortlessly that is a skill some do that you know pin drop silence is achieved by singing i just do it with the threat of singing <laughs> <coughs> say the singing was a skill i the conscious entity can exist without exhibiting my skill of singing why i am independent of it but if i as consciousness have to express i can express only through my shakti which is my avyakta potentiality similarly this paramatma whose shakti is this avyakta this avyakta has three qualities what are the three qualities they call three gunas satvik rajasik tamasik through each one of these variations paramatma expresses through the satvik layer through the rajasik layer and through the tamasik layer taking different shapes and forms but is paramatma dependent on that shakti no he can he can exist without expressing but has to interact with this shakti with this avyakta to express in the format of this cosmos okay this is the sequence now what is it that this these two mantras make sense to us these two mantras make sense to us only when we identify where in this entire staircase are we where is it that we have to go is understood we need peace we need happiness if we need peace and happiness 
shouldn't we first identify where we are? So, where are we? Indriye bhyav para hyarthaha Arthe bhyascha param manaha Manasastu para buddhi Buddhe paratastu mahan so, where exactly are we in this sequence? Swamiji, after thorough analysis, we feel sometimes we are with the sense objects, sometimes we are in the sense organs, sometimes we are with the mind, sometimes we are with the intellect. We are constantly fluctuating from one to the other. Sometimes what is overpowering? The sense object is overpowering. For example, early in the morning, the hot cup of coffee or tea, the absence of it. My heart sings, Dil Dhundata. <laughs> Searching for that early morning jump start. Without which I feel very sedated. As soon as that coffee smell comes, in the Tom and Jerry. The moment they smell, they start floating in air and start following that smell. Our mind is like that. It starts floating. And wherever the coffee smell comes, it stops there. Sometimes it is with the sense objects. Sometimes the desire is so strong that I am at the level of the mind. Sometimes I am at the level of the intellect. So, if we are at this external periphery, we should learn to practice gaining control over the sense organs, the mind and intellect. How do we gain that balance? How do we gain that control? The sense organs which are habituated to its you know habits can be contained to do the job that which we have as responsibility provided the mind is disciplined without a disciplined mind getting anywhere closer to paramatma is being in fool's paradise discipline we must Benefit of disciplining we may not see while being disciplined. See while growing up as children when our parents keep telling us certain things and we kept reacting and reacting. When did we realize the benefit of what they had said and what they were for us? Only when we are in that situation, end up having our own children. And the first time we see, and then we call, Mom, Dad, I don't know how you handled us. We were seven, eight of us and still you could handle us. Here I am having just one and I am still not able to do it. On one level, there is a deep sense of gratitude for what you have done to us. And the other aspect of it is, 
can you please train again? Because at that time when you were training, I thought it was just a mere waste of disciplining. But now I see if I were disciplined then, how well it would have been used now. So, disciplining has that knack of making life seamless, but seems like very futile at the moment of disciplining. And the second aspect of discipline is, life has lots of ups and downs, unknown turns and twists. Sometimes these turns and twists are so uh, intermittently mixed that our entire flow of life gets thrown off of balance. It happens, there are many overwhelming experiences, we seem to be shaken up. And when we get shaken up and thrown off balance, it is this pre-installed discipline which helps us get back on track sooner than anybody else. Now you tell me, do you know what lies ahead of you in your life? Shouldn't we get disciplining ourselves? Disciplining the mind and bringing clarity to the intellect can bring the organs of perception action into the direction of where we want to take life, rather than where these organs and mind wants us to drag into. If that is where we are, that is where we should start. <clears throat> talking about reaching to that Paramatma. What does he say? He says in the 12th mantra, page 153, Yesha Sarveshu Bhuteshu Gudhotma na prakashate Drishyate tvagraya buddhya Sukshmaya sukshma darshibihi So thus having contained our organs of perception action mind through this discipline, what should the intellect do? With the available clarity and enhancing that clarity further, reach to Tuvagraya Buddhya Sukshmaya Sukshma Darshivihi. Acquire sharpness and subtlety. Sometimes when we go to a lake, there is a beautiful, grand, picturesque setting. There is a beautiful mountain. And this we found in our trip to you know, Kailash and Mansarovar. So many lakes. And the sky there is deep blue, that which we would have not seen here. It is a, it's a different texture of blue. And within one frame, you have uh, acres of spread of you know, deserts and suddenly there is a lake. Just as a backdrop to that lake is a very thin belt of green and then there is this majestic mountains, snow capped mountains. Now, what is the best part? All of this reflecting in the lake. Amazing. And when, why can you, uh, how can you watch this entire beauty? Because the lake 
is so pristine condition that there is not even a ripple it's so clear it does not have any disturbances on its surface and the entire depth of it is pure clean that is how our intellect should be vast depth to take any experience and not shaken up by it crispness and that sharpness to go through any experience and not uh, get contaminated by that experience and subtlety to constantly turn the attention towards that conscious principle because of which an experience becomes experienceable how can we turn that only when the intellect is still subtle and sharp that is when the paramatma can be experienced <coughs> so what should the wise one do looking at this message so yama maharaj says this is what each one of us should do and he says the pragnya wise one usually do this what does it mean if we are doing it we are also wise if we are not following this sequence then we are otherwise now it is a test of individual character so please test it for yourself don't test for the rest of the world around in the 13th mantra page 155 यछेदवांगमनसे प्राज्ञ तद्यछेद ज्ञान आत्मनी ज्ञान आत्मनी महती नियछेत अति नियछेत तद्यछेदात आत्मनी यछेदवांग मनसे प्राज्ञ विथड्रॉ दि सेंस परसेप्शन्स एंड एक्शन्स इन टू द माइंड मीनिंग ब्रिंग दि ऑर्गन्स ऑफ परसेप्शन एंड एक्शन under the control and balance of the mind when can we bring the organs of perception and action under control of mind when the mind itself is under control <coughs> without the mind under control can we control the organs of perception and action it becomes impossible this mind what should it be done tad yached gnana atmani it should be surrendered to the intellect this intellect should be surrendered into the totality and that totality should be merged into the supreme state of peace which is the nature of paramatma so where is peace not anywhere outside if we are searching for peace outside sometimes i hear you know like for example when the parents get frustrated with the children You, you you are the cause for my disturbance and lack of peace <coughs> anybody any thing 
any place, any circumstance, any time <coughs> cannot give us that peace. If we are trying to search for peace in all these other variables, all that will be left of us is in pieces. Where is peace? The ultimate peace is in that Paramatma alone. <coughs> Karmanye vadhikaraste maphaleshu kadachana. Karma we perform in anticipation of this peace and happiness. Maphaleshu kadachana. And it is not the peace and happiness is not the result of various interactions with places, with beings, with things, with circumstances, with time. Peace and happiness is not the result. If we really are sincere about having peace and happiness, what should we do? surrender, control the organs of perception action through a balanced mind. Control that mind with the clarity of the intellect. That clear subtle intellect has to be merged into the totality, become one with the flow. And that totality when it is surrendered ultimately at the feet of the Lord, that is when we experience peace. Wherever there is a foundation of peace, happiness is guaranteed. We are seeking happiness with a restless setup. Can we be happy? If our mind is constantly agitated, can I say, my mind is agitated, but I am very happy. It sounds a very ignorant statement. So, first that peace has to be attained. Hence, therefore, we as individuals, what should we do? A famous mantra of this Kathopanishad which has been made famous by Nachiketa and Yamaraja, but in our recent times by our Vivekananji. He used to use this sentence often. What is the meaning of it? That we will see tomorrow. <coughs> the 14th mantra. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Om Shant Shant Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyona Hari Om